okay so good morning guys so for today's class we'll be focusing on box sizing property and media query so without wasting time let's quickly dive into the content of you know these two sections so for the content we have today in the first section which is the box sizing property we'll be seeing its definition the values that are associated with this property I would also be looking into the syntax and <clears throat> as you as we all know at the end of every section would obviously have you know a quick demo on how each of you know what we've learned actually works so we'd also be trying out this box sizing property on vs code and would actually get to see what, what really happens with this property so in the second section we have media query here we'll be looking at what a media query is, the benefits of using the media query because we learned about Flexbox before, which is also associated with responsiveness. And the media query also is like that likewise. But then the media query does you know, its own job with responsiveness quite differently with Flexbox, which is why most people would actually go for media query rather than going with flexbox or some people even combine both together so we'll be seeing the benefits of using media query i would also be seeing the syntax and i would explain the entire syntax and would also see a quick example of a media query query and after this we we'll are going to the vs code and we'll try you know these media queries out so for our first section, we have the box sizing property. So the box sizing property determines how a user should calculate the total height and the total width of an element. So as we all know from previous classes we've had, we've tried a lot of HTML elements, both block elements and inline elements. And these elements, you know, are actually rendered differently depending on the category they fall in either as a block or an inline element now as we all know for the block element the height and the width actually are within the content area of that element you know that's what we know when we learned about the box model because the box model as we all know it has four layers the content area the padding the border and the margin but the, the height and the width only affect the content area, which is the area where the element's content is being rendered on the screen. And likewise, is also the same for the inline text. But one thing we should know is that when we set a particular height and width to this element, it is actually displayed differently on the screen. So as we all know, the content area of a block element actually spans through the entire line and that's because that's how it is by default unlike the inline the inline only takes this space necessary that by that we mean it only takes the exact space its content is being rendered on so applying the height and the width to each category of elements would actually display a different results and then the total height and the total width would actually be different if paddings and borders are added to each of these elements. So here, the box sizing property actually determines how we want to how we want to calculate the total height and the total width if the borders and paddings are included or not. So that's what we'll be seeing, you know, in this section of today's class. So right here, the box sizing property has two main values. As you can see on the screen, the first value here is the content box value, which has a bracket written in it as default. So what I actually mean is that the content box value is the default value. So by that, I mean, if we, if we don't apply the, this property with this value on any element at all it's still going to use this because it's the default way 
HTML has it. But we also have another value known as the border box value. So by default, every element without using the box sizing property are actually associated with the first value, which is content box. But then you can actually decide to use the other value, which is the border box value. So we'll be getting to see how these values actually work when we get to, you know, VS Code. So for the first value, which is also the default value, the default value content box calculates the total height and the total width by including the actual height and the actual width with paddings and borders. So what this actually means is that if, for instance, you define a width and a height for a particular element, now the entire height wouldn't just be the height you've defined, but it's going to be the height plus the paddings and the margins, I mean, and the borders. And that would also be the same with the width also. So as you can see in the syntax we have below the screen, the box sizing properties assign the value of content box. So this is exactly the way we would have it on VS Code. But like I said before, even without doing this, this is actually the default value. So even when you don't have this property being assigned to this value, it still renders it exactly this way because that's how HTML does it by default. Yeah, so here we'll be seeing how this height is actually calculated. And as you can see on the screen, the total height of any of any HTML element is actually calculated by an addition of the actual height, which could be defined or not, then plus the padding top and the padding bottom. Now, we all know that the padding and the borders, they're actually divided into four parts. For the padding, it's the padding top, bottom, padding left, and padding right. And for the border, it's actually the border top, bottom, border left, and border right. So in the box model that we all know about, you would notice that the padding top and bottom are actually aligned with the height of the element, likewise with the border top and the border bottom. While for the width, we have the padding left and right to be aligned with the width, and we also have the border left and the border right also aligned with the width. So the total height of any element that would use the default value or not use the border property at all would actually be an addition of the actual height plus the padding top plus the padding bottom with an addition of the border top and the border bottom. That would be the total height of that element. Likewise, the total width would actually be the actual width which could be defined or not plus the padding left, the padding right, the border left, and the border right. So that's how most elements have it by default. And even when you define it, it still has it to be in this way. So a quick example of what I've been explaining since. We have here an element has a width of 200 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Now, if a given padding of 40 pixels, if given a padding of 40 pixels and a border of 2 pixels, the actual outcome would be this. And as you can see, we have the total height to be the actual height of 100 pixels plus 40 pixels. Now, the first 40 pixels here is actually the padding top, which is then followed by the padding bottom, which is the next 40 pixels. Also, we have the border top of two pixels and we have the border bottom of another two pixels. So a sum of everything together would give you 184 pixels of the total height of that element as opposed to the actual height, which is 100 pixels. So that actually means that you, you have 84 pixels worth of paddings and borders for the height. And also for the total width, we have the actual width of 200 pixels, which is also added with the 
padding left of 40 pixels also with the padding right of another 40 pixels likewise the border left and right of two pixels each and that would sum up to 284 pixels so here it has 84 pixels worth of paddings and borders being added with the actual width. so that's how you get the total height and width of every html element by default or even when you decide to assign the box sizing value um, property the value of content box so by using this default value the elements content area would appear bigger than you have set and that's because the paddings and the borders were added to the defined height and width so you might probably be wondering like you know does it really matter of course it might matter in some cases because you probably would want to have a fixed width for a particular amount of text and as you all know by adding padding and borders the width would only increase in size and would not actually remain the way you actually set it to be so to fix this problem we would look into the other value So for this other value, it's known as the border box value. The border box value calculates the total height and the total width by the actual height and width defined. So here, you do not really have the borders and the paddings. They do not really determine the height and width of this particular element. It does that on its own by itself. So by that, we can say that you know the paddings and the borders actually do not really have anything when it comes to increasing its the size of that element also any padding or border added will be absorbed into the height and the width defined so what this basically means is that irrespective of the amount of padding or border you have they would only be absorbed into the height and the width you know in as much as the height and the width are actually more than the padding it would only absorb it into itself so by doing that it would retain the defined width and height of that element without changing at all and below the screen you can see the syntax here box sizing is assigned the value of border box so this is exactly how you would have it in your css file or your html file if you were to do it with inline styling or internal styling yeah so this is just basically a representation of what i've been explaining the total height would equal the actual height and also the total width would equal the actual width without changing at all so here we have an example and it's quite similar to the fix the first example we saw so an element that has a width of 200 pixels and a height of 100 pixels if given a padding of 40 pixels and a border of 2 pixels the actual outcome for the total height would still remain 100 pixels now why it would remain 100 pixels is actually because if you should if we are aware of how the calculation works the padding that would be added to this would be the top and the bottom padding and if you should add that that's the top and the bottom padding will give you a total of 80 pixels that's 40 pixels each and likewise the top border and the bottom border would give you a sum of four pixels so you have 84 pixels worth of padding and borders but the total height is actually 100 pixels which is more than the 84 pixels so that actually means that you know it can actually accommodate that you know borders and paddings it, it can absorb it into itself you know as as long as it's more than their addition and likewise the total width also of 200 pixels which is a lot more than 84 pixels of borders and padding it would also absorb it and still retain its actual width now a quick thing to know about here is that the box sizing 
value actually does pretty well when it comes to the width it might not do so well when it comes to the height and you would see the reason why i'm saying so as regarding this statement so a quick note all paddings and borders will be absorbed into the height and width like i said before so by using the border box value the element's content area would appear to be according to the defined height and the defined width of the, the element so it's not going to change at all like a bit so here we'd have a quick demo on how the box sizing property works with both the values of the content box and the border box so now we'll be going to you know vs code So here would we'll, you know create the HTML file. I would also have a CSS. So for this, would we'll actually start with the block level element, the p tag and the div tag. So before this, would we'll actually make a comment, you know, which would actually separate the two categories of elements. So here would be the block elements. Wait, box sizing. Those are, you know, line break tags. So I'm just trying to create a space between both. Here would we'll give this a class name of P. We'll give this a class name of div. So for the first one, would we'll have this to have a width of. 300 pixels and the height of 100 pixels we would also give this a border too let's save So if we open with live server, you can actually see it this way now. So what we are going to do next, we are going to, okay, we are going to have the text here to be the same with this. So you'd see how this actually works.
Okay, I think we've not linked our CSS here. Also have the div, the width of 300 pixels, and also a height of 100 pixels. So for this, we also have the same border of one pixel, solid red. I'll give this a padding of 17 pixels. So now on the browser, this is how we have this to be. And you can see that both of them actually have exactly the same height and width. The only difference between this first um, box here is the fact that it doesn't have a padding but although it has a border which is the same with this the one below but then the padding that has been added here in the second actually makes the width increase that's why it's longer than this so that's why i said the padding actually increases the width of the element and also the height so you can see it's longer than this other one, despite the fact that they had exactly the same height and width attached to the two of them. So the padding here really makes the difference in both elements. So for now, both of them are actually working with the default value of content box. So that actually means if we were to go back here to define the box sizing as content box, you shouldn't really expect a difference. So if I save this and visit our browser, as you can see, nothing changes. And that's because every HTML element has this to be the value by default, as I explained before. So nothing changes here at all. So next would be trying this out with the other value of content box I mean border box so what we are going to do now we are going to create like a template of how the entire you know the entire content should look like so for this we'll have a special p tag give this a class name of Temp would also have the same text in there. So this would actually hold a width of 300 pixels and also a height of 100 pixels. So saving this would give us, okay. Okay, we didn't save this HTML file, oh, that's why. Okay, so we have this, we we'll also give this, okay, we wouldn't add a border to that, but we'd rather have, have it to hold the background. Background of blue. Yeah. Okay, yes. So now, this particular text with the background of blue has a defined height and width. So now there are no borders or, you know, 
paddings attached to it but you know by default it still holds the content um box value so now we'll create another p tag that is going to have a padding and a border value but you would also see that it would look exactly like this one right here without changing all the only thing that will probably change is the position of this text that we have here this actual text the position is probably what would change but the entire length of you know the height and width would actually remain the same so let's do that So we'll probably have some other tags to probably a p tag and a div tag. So the class name of p1. This will have a div of div1. It would also have the same text in both. So this will hold the same height and width also. And probably the same background too. But now we are going to add a border of 5 pixels. Solid red. Would add a padding of 40 pixels. So we'll copy this into the you know the class name. So we have this to be this way. So what's actually different now is the fact that I would add the box sizing to be border box so if I save this and go back to the browser okay so you know Let's just make this closer with the one at the top. So we'll comment these ones out. We'll probably just take them below. That would be our Okay, so okay, let's just still make the space closer. So now you can see on the screen that the first three, you know, content area of this element actually have the same height and width, exactly the same, even with the fact that a five pixels worth of border has been added to it and also with a padding of 20 pixels it still maintains the same length here that's in terms of the height and in terms of the width the only thing now that changes like i said that would change is actually the position of this text so as you can see in the very first blue box you have the text to be aligned to the top left corner but here because of the padding and the border you know that we attach to this you you actually have the text being rendered somewhere you know in the middle but not really in the middle anyway but it's somewhere you know just there and that's actually because the content area has actually absorbed the padding into itself so now it isn't going to allow the padding to make it the width actually increase but rather it's going to squeeze it inside so by doing such it would actually change the 
position of the content the content itself which is why you have this text to be where it is now and not like where you have it here to be at the top left corner so that's how the border box value actually works so we've already tried this for the block level elements let's try this for the inline elements So we would still maintain, okay, the template, just comment this. So here we have the span tag. We also have, oh. Also have the same text. Next, we'll have another inline element small tag. So give this a class name of this one. And this will have a class name of S2. So we won't be making use of all of this, so we'll just comment them out. Even this also. So as we all know, the by default, all inline elements have their height and width to actually be very, very fixed in terms of the fact that it only takes the amount of space where its content is being rendered. So if we were to have a width of 300 pixels and a height of 100 pixels, actually I don't think this, this, this would actually make changes to the inline element. But let's see if it does. If we go back to our browser, okay. Let's just give this a border to make it more obvious. Okay, so right here, we still have this text and I'm guessing this is from the paragraph we have that we didn't comment out yet. That's this. So back to the browser, you can actually see that the inline element has a border of one pixel solid red. But despite the fact that we actually define the height and the width to be 300 pixels and 100 pixels, it actually doesn't make any change to this element as this element still retains the exact content area it has by default. So that actually means the height and the width do not really affect inline elements at all, as opposed to the block level elements. But I'm sure with a padding, we would see a difference. So we'll add a padding of 20 pixels. And we also then start the second one. 
okay let's just leave that for now it's still the same thing they would have, they should have. okay so now the padding actually makes a change here and you know the padding actually you know creates this amount of space but let's try styling with the other elements also so this would this would have the same thing here Okay, so now it looks like the margin, the padding top isn't very obvious. And that's probably because we already defined a height for this. Okay, here. So now we have both inline elements that actually have. 300 pixels of width and 100 pixels of height which did not work out as we had before the block level elements but as you can see the padding in these two are so obvious so that actually means that these elements are still making use of the default value of content box so even if we decide to you know add that here We shouldn't really expect a difference also so going back to the browser it's still the same so both inline and block level elements actually retain that default value except you decide to to set the box sizing property to the border box value so we we'll do that straight away we we'll change this to border box also this save this wow okay so <laughs> you can see it now the inline level element actually does not even agree with the border box value so I'm guessing that's probably because the height and the width of an inline element cannot be defined. Even when you define it, it would always retain the amount of space its content is being rendered on. So in as much as, you know, the height and the width can be defined, then the whole purpose of, you know, the border box value is virtually useless for the inline element. And this is, this also happens because of the fact that inline elements are actually rendered between a limited amount of space on a particular line unlike the block level elements that actually take the entire line they can actually have their height and width being as large as that line when defined but for the inline elements it doesn't appear to be so which is why the border box value doesn't work and the content box value is what it retains even at this moment so i hope with this we have a good understanding of how the border box and the content value work for both inline level elements and block level elements so without wasting time let's move on to the next section so for the next section we have the media query section so what is a media query a media query is a css styling in css3 now many of us might not know but css3 is actually the latest version of css and the previous version of css was actually css2 so you know just know this so the media query is a css styling in css3 which makes use of at media rule 
in order to define a block of CSS properties that would function only if a particular condition is true. So here, what this basically means is that with the media query, with, with media query, you can actually define a block of CSS properties that will that would not function generally, but would only function if a particular condition is true. So now you'd be guessing, you know, we've not really done anything like this before. And that's actually because all the stylings we've been having right from the very first CSS class up until now, we did not set any kind of condition to know if something is true or false. The stylings have always been attached to the general, um, what's it called, HTML. So here we can actually define a particular condition that if it is true, this would actually render the element this way. And this condition is one of the things that actually helps the media query in terms of responsiveness. Because as we all know, laptops and desktop screens, they are quite bigger than mobile screens. And so if you were to use the general way of styling CSS to just style all screens like that, that would actually mean that the people that use the desktop and the laptop would have better experience on your website than those using smartphones and mobile phones. So for that not to be the case, with media query, you can actually define some conditions like, okay, if the screen size of the device is this particular width or height, this is how I want it to be displayed. So by doing such, you don't have anything like a general display for all screen sizes. You've actually defined it that, oh, if the screen size is this width, this is how I want it. If it's this width, this is how I want it. If it's this width, this is how I want it. So the media query actually gives you the power to define how you want HTML to appear in different sizes and different width and with different, you know, conditions. So that's one of the, you know, major benefits of the media query. So here we'll be seeing the benefits of using media query. And like I said before, the media query allows a user to display different CSS styles depending on the size of the browser window. So this would also affect the size of our browser window and by browser window we actually mean the entire space of the browser that we can see on the screen so for the purpose of this um, section would actually when we render the HTML on the browser we are actually going to reduce the size of the browser window we, we are not going to have the full the full screen you know display we've always had so you know I'm actually going to do that to actually show you how this media query actually works in terms of you know the display of different css styles as regarding the size of a browser window so another benefit of media query is the fact that media queries enable a user to define different style properties for different devices so i, I already said this before that you know back in the day when Websites were a thing, were just something, you know, that just came up. That's after the invention of the internet by um, Tim Berners-Lee and, you know, any other, all of that things that happened then. Websites could only look better on laptop and desktop sizes. But as we have today, websites actually look nicer on even mobile displays. And even when you decide to um, change the orientation of the phone that's from landscape that's by you know auto rotate as we all know the website would actually still look okay so the media query is one of the concepts that actually enable that to happen so and also another benefit of media query is that media query being a key part of responsive design actually allows a user to create different layouts for different viewport sizes. So with 
the media query, you can actually create different layouts for the different viewport sizes. Now, you might not know this, but different browsers have their viewport sizes. So their viewport size would actually would actually determine how any web page that is being you know used to open through them you know to actually determine how to display that web page so media query also helps in displaying its property and properly irrespective of the browser you are using or the viewport of you know the browser So here is an example of the media query syntax and it begins with the at media rule. Now this at media that we can actually that we are seeing on the screen on this with this um red ink was actually introduced in CSS2. Now that, that's a previous version to the current version which is CSS3. And it was also used to define style rules for different media types so that's what the art media is used for it's just used to you know is it actually starts the syntax begins the syntax to define different style rules for different media types so next it is followed by the not slash only media type so what this basically means is that with the media query syntax you can actually get to to declare a particular media, a particular um, property for a media type, you know, you can actually have this to be only a particular media type or not a particular media type. Now, in the event where you don't use not and only, it would actually use the default value, which is all. So that, that actually means that even when using media query, you can still have a display for general a general media type so it's going to be like that in all types of media so except so you can actually define how you want it only for a particular media type or not for a particular media type so this is also followed by the and here and also an expression which is in this bracket that's the normal bracket now it also has the curly braces and in between these curly braces are your css codes so this is where the entire styling would actually take place so you would have all the things you want to define for that particular media type or that property you are trying to you know that particular property you are trying to style you would actually have all the styles right here for that So here we have the at media, which I've explained before, which is a rule that is used to define the different styles for different media types. Next, we have the media type. So the media type in CSS are listed below as the following. We have the all, which is used to, used to you know, is used for all media type devices so like i said before without using the not and the only by default it will just apply that styling to all also we have the print this is used for printers really don't know how this works and we would be you know trying this out since we don't have a printer here so next we have the screen this is actually the most popular one and this is used for desktop, laptop, mobile, and smartphone screens. So this particular media type is actually the most common one that is being used. And it's actually the most popular one. So for this, um, for the practical session of this class, we'd actually be looking at the screen type and not the print, you know. And lastly, we have the speech. So this is used by a screen reader and it reads a page out but you know the major one here is actually the screen media type so we'd actually be looking at different displays of screens that we have 
So lastly, we have the expression. So the expression is a media feature that is associated with the block of CSS properties that would function when it evaluates as true. So this media feature is actually assigned a value. So after assigning this media feature a value, through the media feature, you can actually define a block of CSS properties and this would only function when that particular media feature evaluates as true. So by that we mean when the condition is true, it would actually style it according to the CSS properties that are being defined there. So this media feature can be seen as the following, but they are not limited to this. So for the first media feature, we have the aspect ratio. So for people who know about display and resolution, you know what an aspect ratio is. So it's just a defined amount of pixels, that's a height and width together. But then there is this ratio they have, whereby the moment you increase one, the other one automatically increases increases because of the ratio that you know that they, they, they are both using. Also, we have the orientation orientation media feature. We also have the color. We have the resolution. We have the grid also with the height and the width. So the media features are not limited to this, but these are just some of the examples of media features we have. So here is a quick example of an actual you know media query syntax and this is how we are going to have it exactly on vs code so you can see that we have at media which is the media rule which is followed by a media type screen and inside the brackets we have that the normal bracket we have a minimum width of 520 pixels so the minimum width here is the media feature and the 520 pixels is the value that is assigned to this media feature because as we saw in the previous slide the width is actually a media feature so the width there is actually describes all types of width whether it's minimum width maximum width or normal width here we have the media feature of minimum width with a value of 520 pixels and now inside the CSS code section, which is the you know curly braces, we now have the body element, and we have the body element to have a styling of background color, which is blue. So what this would basically do when we try this out on VS Code is that by default you would notice that the background color of our browser is pure white, but the moment we resize the browser to 520 pixels the background color is going to change to blue so that's why this media query is very you know unique it can actually change the entire html page depending on any condition that was given so here we've given it a condition of minimum width of 520 pixels so this means when we have a minimum width of this 520 pixels the background color of the body should be blue so this would make the entire body of, you know, the page to appear in blue color. So we'll be seeing how this actually happens on VS Code. Yeah, so without wasting time, let's try this out. So for this, we would create a new HTML file, or we could still make use of you know these ones we have here. So here we would have comments, media query examples.
so you know how we begin you start with the at media rule which is followed by the screen so for this we'll have minimum width is 520 pixels so you know what we have right here our entire styling goes here and the styling isn't only limited to the body that we saw in the example but it, it actually covers your normal styling generally so for this we'll have the body To actually have a background color So we'll be seeing how this actually works on you know on the browser. Okay, so it seems we have okay, yeah, the and okay. Yeah, so now we'll save this. We'll go back to our browser. And now we have a background color of blue. So what this basically means is that the minimum once the minimum width of this browser window gets to 520 pixels it would still maintain the blue color but the moment it gets below that it goes back to the default value of you know the background so would actually from this moment would start resizing this browser window you can see now it changes to white color if we open it up, it becomes blue. We do the same, it keeps going, it becomes white. Now, don't really bother about, you know, the inline elements. The reason why the borders are overlapping, as we all know, is because it's an inline element. So, they're actually on the same line. And we increase, you know, the height. We define the, we added them borders to this. So, they would actually touch each other. But focusing on media query, now we have this to hold a width that is lesser than 520 pixels, which is why it's a white color here. But the moment we increase this to a minimum width of 520 pixels, it begins to have that blue color. And any other pixel larger than that would also keep having the blue color. So this doesn't only just work for the default value we can actually define a background color on our own so we'll go back to we'll come somewhere here i would have the body have a background color of red okay, let's comment all of this out we don't need them anymore So now we are back here and we have a completely blue background but now we've already defined the border to be a red color so once we get to a width that is lesser than 520 pixels it will automatically become a red background and not a, a blue background anymore so if we keep resizing this
now we have a red background so that that actually means that the width we have here is lesser than the minimum width we have in our code which is 520 pixels so the moment it gets to 520 pixels it begins displaying the property of you know background color which is blue so you have blue red blue red so peradventure you had this to be the display of a web page this would actually mean that for desktop and laptop users they would actually see your web page to be in blue color like this and for someone that is using a mobile device which has a width that is definitely lesser than, lesser than 520 pixels they will have their own background to be in this color red so this is one of the things that media query can actually do for you and it can actually do even more you know for this we are just styling the background of this page so let's try some other width sizes we have at media maximum width seven eight pixels Okay, so it changes to maximum width also. This would be, let's have this to be a hundred and, a thousand and two hundred pixels or one thousand and twenty four pixels. And then we'll have this to be six hundred pixels. We can actually define any amount of pixel you want. So for this would we'll have the background color to still maintain the blue and let's some let's add some text here so i guess we'll uncomment all of this oh, okay let's just use an entirely different text here we we'll have heading one let's have some headings into would have a paragraph tag just something to hold content so you can actually see, you'd actually see that we can even change the content of this element while resizing the browser okay So if we save this now, go back to our browser. Okay, so by default, we have the text here to be in black color. So what we are going to be doing here, when the maximum width is 124 pixels, it will have a background of blue, and it's also going to have a color. As for the text, it will have a color blue color what's okay i think white appears better on blue. okay so for this would we'll actually start with a smaller display here yeah exactly like this the background would be 
let's say green i will have the color of our text to be dark gray so since we have this to have a width smaller than the one above we'll place it at the top but it doesn't really matter but just for better understand let's have the smaller one here so now if we save this and go back to our browser it has the background of blue and the text now are in white um, display so if we begin increasing this okay it doesn't seem to probably have an error somewhere Let's probably change this to minimum width. Okay, we didn't give this color. Okay, so save this. We should actually have this changing. Um, okay, I really don't know why this is not working, but this is meant to work. Let's just try something with the previous example we had before. I think it will make the, the, the big pixel the minimum width and the smaller one the maximum width it should have a difference. Okay, because this actually works normally. But then it's not really, you know, it's one of the things that happen when you develop stuff. Okay, so now it actually has the red background, and if we resize this, it, it actually has the blue background. So I'll be changing the text as we resize. So for this, we'll have the color. Color here would be Alice Blue. So here, as we resize this, you would actually see the color of the text change and it wouldn't be in black ink anymore. And so it becomes a white color. Yeah. So this is actually how, you know, unique the media query works depending on different um, browser windows and screen sizes. So let's also try out some examples.
probably have this to be 124 pixels for this would have a green color i want to try this for multiple displays so as we keep resizing you actually see different backgrounds with different color of text so we have dark Okay, now we have the green color, the red. Green, and as we keep going, I think we should have a blue color last. Oh, we don't. Yeah, I think the value is 1024, not 124, like this. You said to write. If you have a smaller pixel, even this one display, it will only just change from the blue to green. Okay, the red isn't displaying here at all. Okay, so let's just look at other properties aside from just the body. So take this out. Sir, sorry, sir. Um, does it mean we cannot have more than um? Color, no, you you can because have. Obviously... Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, is actually the maximum width that it's meant to do that. I'm surprised it's not, you know, picking up. Probably because I didn't define something, or I don't know. But I'll I'll definitely look into that before this class ends. So let's try out something else. So back to the HTML, just have a couple of content here. And also with the media query, you can actually use other properties like the display property we had before to, you know, hide content or change the display of content. So for this, we'll have a div. Use the class name of div. And have some text here. Yeah. Stuff. So we'll comment this out first of all. Okay, so now we have a red background with this div text right here. So what I'll be doing is that I'm going to be hiding this text as we resize the browser. Here at media screen, this will be the div. have a display equals to none. So by doing this, this should actually not display 
the content when we resize this browser window okay so it doesn't appear here at all but as we you know get to a size lesser than 520 pixels it actually shows up so if you do the same by drawing this this will go out it goes out so that's one of the ways i think they use in hiding content from you know when you visit a web page on your cell phone and it doesn't really look exactly the way it is on a bigger screen so some contents are being hidden because of the amount of things they have on that website so the media quick can actually do that also so this is just for the display let's try out something else So I really would like to show it in terms of responsiveness. So I'll be creating some columns. one T1 Would be okay, so be T2, T3, and T4. So for this, we'll be having the box sizing to be border box for everything. So this can be done using the asterisk sign. So this way, depending on the width we define, it should actually absorb, you know, the paddings inside them. So we'll also give each of these a background color. So we'll be coming back to the media screen. Let's just take this out for now. So T1 have a background of green. Let's just make the background color. Let's just leave it with the default color. T2. Red. Hmm. Blue. 
Lucky Blue Rowlet. The last one. Brown. If we go back to our browser, would actually have yes, they would actually appear this way. So as we all know, you can see that all of these are block level elements with different backgrounds. So with media query, you can actually align them the way you want. You can see by default now they are all being stacked on each other, or probably would not want this. We go back here. Class B for the contents. or better still can actually just style them together So here because they are actually four um you know four divs you can actually give them equal amount of width of the entire you know screen that's vertically i mean horizontally that's the width so to do that we would give them a width of 25 percent so now we are not going to be using pixels we'll be using percent and Doing this would actually give each of these divs a width of 25% on the screen. So since there are actually four of them, if you multiply that by, you know, the percentage, it gives you 100% of the entire screen. So if we save this and go back to our browser, actually have this. Okay. So give this flow. It doesn't pick up. Okay, so we we'll have to do this visually. I hope this picks up. Okay, so this goes. we have to give it a display of inline since it's a block element by default so this should actually give it 25 percentage of width with different colors oh it doesn't <laughs> okay so just probably give this you know 8 or 25 pixels independently Five percent.
okay so here they have a width of 25 percent of the entire line that's each line here so now we'll be putting this within a general div tag so this is actually not picking up hmm. that's strange well anyway I think that should be enough for media query for now till you know i really have to look into the examples later on thank you thank you